day at 9 a.m. on your Monday. I'm Nicole Nalefa. Scott Haney here, and I see you. How was your weekend? It was okay. It was filled with amoxicillin, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. <laughs> we are living on amoxicillin. Kids are sick, oh, up all so night. so unfortunate. But you know what? It's just the season. So George is in. on the mend, but Emmy has got a little ear infection. Yeah, so. I know. And, you, you know, you feel so helpless when I your know, kids are you so wanna... young and they can't communicate to you that they're not feeling well, so that part stinks. Yeah. But, but she's a trooper. She's doing really well. We FaceTimed this morning, and she was waving and everything. Okay, so. good. That makes me feel You know, better. how was your weekend? You had quite the contrast. <laughs> Friday night, I uh, I played golf and out to dinner with my friend Jack. Then Saturday, I went to the home, sh home show, left there at 3 o'clock, went to New Jersey, Drove to New Jersey, had dinner with my friend Sharon and John from high school. Then we played golf the next morning, drove back, took me three and a half to four hours to get home in traffic. So where did you get caught? Uh, Danbury? Right, yeah, Danbury. 84, 684, 84 there? 684, 684. Oh, every time. The, that is the tough. sweet spot. Yeah, there you go. Well, it sounds like you're coming off a nice of a weekend. Yes, nice I did weekend, have a good so. weekend. Good. All right, uh, let's get right into our top headlines. Meriden City Council is holding a special meeting tonight to figure out what's next for the city manager. Timothy Kuhn was removed from his position last week after someone called police on him for making a disturbance inside of a multifamily home. Now, by the time police got there, Kuhn was asleep in a hallway. Officers got him inside and left, but this is Kuhn's second run-in with police this year. He was arrested for a DUI back in April, and right now, Meriden's police chief has been named interim city manager. So tonight's meeting is set for 5.30, and Channel 3, of course, will be there. Find out what the city council decides and what it means for Meriden residents later tonight on Channel 3 Eyewitness News. It's going to be a nice day today, although the clouds will certainly be on the increase. As you can see from our first alert live radar, we are scanning the state dry. And according to First Alert Futurecast, Tomorrow's weather today, we are going to be seeing that cloud coverage kind of rolling on in. So look for a mostly cloudy day, a cooler day than yesterday, that's for sure. Yesterday was just beautiful with temperatures in the mid-60s. Now you'll notice overnight tonight through very early tomorrow morning, a little rainfall, a little song, a little dance, a little seltzer down your pants uh, right around 5 a.m. So that's from Mary Tyler Moore, just in case you didn't know. What is it, the clown? The clown funeral, yes, it was incredible. Uh, the rest of today, uh, geez, uh, it looks good. But tomorrow, we're going to clear things out. Election day, 65 to 66 degrees. That's great. With mostly sunny skies. It's going to be a great day tomorrow to get out the vote. Temperatures today top out in the low 50s in inland Connecticut, upper 50s, uh, mid, mid 50s for the uh, shoreline. Increasing cloudiness, mild and breezy tomorrow, and then cooler and sunny for Wednesday. Well, as you were saying, polls are going to be open this time tomorrow across our state. I can't believe it. 24 hours, less than 24 hours from now. Yep. So what do you you need to know to get ready to vote. Chief political reporter Susan Raff is here to walk us through some of the biggest races. Good morning, Susan. Nice morning. to see you. Good morning. What a great weather we had over the weekend. Oh, Phenomenal. It was incredible. Did yeah. we not have any rain over these? Don't, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's going to help tomorrow, certainly, with uh, voter turnout. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. there's always, I always pray for good weather on election day mm -hmm. so that people get out the vote. There's no excuse not to get no out there excuse. with the rain and stuff. And the good news is it is not too late if you haven't registered to vote, but you can't do it online. You can only do it uh, in person okay. up until the time that the polls close at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Okay. But keep in mind that you have to do it in person at your town hall. Town hall. So a lot of town halls vary on when their hours are. Mm -hmm. So you want to do that. So and in terms of uh, identification, what you, you just... You need ID. Uh, you've, a driver's license is best, but you can actually use a utility bill, a credit card, anything uh, with your name. Something establishes your residence and That's your name. Right. Okay. All right. So what is one of the biggest races in our state tomorrow? God, well, I think the buzz certainly has been Bridgeport, right? Everybody's mm. been talking about that. Right. Crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's still very up in the air. So the way that it is now, there will be a general election in the mayor's race tomorrow in Bridgeport. And then the, the there will probably be a primary after that. Uh, so, you know, I think, I mean, obviously, if you don't live in Bridgeport, someone would say, well, why would I care? But what's happened in Bridgeport, because of the court case, because of the impropriety, the judge was very concerned about seeing this video with people stuffing, stuffing. ballots into a box late at night. And there you see it there. Uh, the judge was very concerned about that. And so people will think that there's, you know, fraud or, but it's also important to keep in mind that the system worked. I mean, there were video cameras on those drop boxes. Mm, that's so, a good point. 
thing. Yeah, I mean, so it, it worked. So, you know, there have been calls to get rid of those ballot boxes, uh, the drop boxes, which really came about during uh, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, there's going to be an election tomorrow in Bridgeport, a lot of candidates, and um, then they'll probably have a primary between Mayor Ganim and John Gomes. Uh, as you know, Gomes lost the election by 251 votes. Right. Now, if he wins, does it mean they'll still hold a primary, or will it well, pretty much be scrapped? That is really up in the air. Okay. Gomes says no. He said, you know, if I win the election, I'll put down my sword, but I don't think it's up to him to put down his sword. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, there are a lot of other races. I mean, we have a big state uh, tomorrow. People in uh, Hartford will yeah. be going to the polls. New mayor this time, Mayor Bronin, has been around for a long time. I believe uh, the Democrat endorsed uh, Rulampalam will probably win that. Uh, mayor Elliker in New Haven. Uh, he probably will slide back into that position. He won by a landslide uh, in the Democratic primary. Waterbury's going to get somebody new. Uh, Mayor Leary, O'Leary, he's out now. He didn't want to run again. Uh, and then Florsheim in Middletown, right? Florsheim yeah. in Middletown, yeah. One he, of the youngest uh, mayors? He was. You know, we've had a couple of uh, young mayors in Middletown, but yeah. he was definitely the youngest by far. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, cities will probably see some Democratic victories, but I think for first selectmen in some of the rural eastern towns, uh, Republicans will probably do better. One race that could be interesting to watch is in Derby. Uh, you have a Republican mayor there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, who is being challenged by a more right-wing uh, conservative, someone who actually is now uh, facing federal charges for his participation in January 6th. Yep. Um, hmm. So that's uh, interesting to see. He actually, the challenger, won the primary. So we'll see what happens in the general election. It's not a presidential election this year. Correct. What do you think turnout's going to be like? You know, they never like to say so. I don't want to either. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the primary was probably very paltry. It was maybe 20%. You'll mm -hmm. get at least twice that, maybe more. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen in Bridgeport uh, for voter turnout. You know, will it encourage more people to come to the polls? Or or will people say, well, you know, it doesn't really count. There's going to be a primary. Maybe I won't go. Mm -hmm. So I'd be very curious to see. But it should be a nice day. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of other um, ballot issues. I know in Middletown they're going to be voting for a boat house. So it's important to get out and vote. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just, you know, your mayor and first selectman, which is obviously extremely important, right. but those issues that your taxpayer dollars support. Yep, it okay. starts at the local level. That's Chief, right. Polls open 6 a.m to 8 p.m. There you have it. If you haven't registered to vote yet, please do so. Chief political reporter Susan Raff is going to be part of our complete coverage of all the biggest races tomorrow on Channel 3. Thank you, Susan, for coming on. Bye. Well, thank you. Hopefully a good election day. Absolutely. Yes. All right.